So as we find ourselves over halfway through the year 2012, one of the major buzz phrases and buzz topics is obviously what's happening right now and what's going to happen throughout this year of transformation. People are usually paint talking about you know a global shift or a global awakening or some sort of global transformation that's just going to change the face of the world, change existence as we know it. Yeah, the funny thing is, is that what people usually mean by terms as like a major shift or a global awakening or global transformation is really that the world will be as they think it should be and really everyone will think as they think that they should. Or another simpler way to put it is the world will be how I think it should be and everyone will see the world as I think they should see it. That's usually what most people mean by a global shift, a global awakening or a global transformation because they have this idea or this box or this set of principles or values or ideas that they think everyone else should follow because they're deemed higher or more noble or deemed some sort of positive label, then they think everyone else should follow suit. Yet, if we've noticed any common trends throughout history, there's been many other groups that have thought the same thing and have waged wars and have done a lot of things to make people see the way, so to make people see the world the way they think they should see it. And proponents of such theories are usually speaking of the virtues of oneness and love and compassion, enlightenment and awakening and consciousness and evolution. Yet really how evolved, compassionate or enlightened is it to insist or assume that others should see the world or others should behave as you think they should? Meaning how really enlightened or compassion is it to say, well, this is what I think is right and good, and this is how I think the world should be, so everyone else should follow suit and jump in line. So that's one major thing which I think really needs to be examined and really needs to be taken a hard look at. Second thing is that typically when people are parodying or propagating these sort of ideas or theories, I think we should ask, is this really my experience? Or am I just parroting or propagating someone else's meme, someone else's thought virus, or someone else's experience? Now obviously it's important to be educated and informed about certain things. Obviously I'm not, I'm not being a proponent of just being an ignoramus and living in a cave or living in a little bubble. But what I'm saying is these things should never rule out our own critical thought capacity, nor the volume or audible nature of our own inner truth, of our own inner feelings. And deeper than that, regardless of whatever is or is not happening, whatever might or might not happen, the big questions still need to be asked and still need to be adequately answered. And these are questions that people usually don't want to deal with, people usually just want to put off in the back, and that's why it's so easy to buy into just giving away our power to, oh, it's the government's fault, oh, it's society's fault, oh, it's my parents' fault, oh, it's religion's fault, oh, it's my teacher's fault, oh, it's the son's fault, oh, I'm a cancer, so I'm this way, or oh, I'm this, so I'm that, oh, I'm a number seven on the Enneagram. We always want to give everything else away to say, well, they have my power. So really, these questions remain. What am I doing with my life? What am I creating with my thoughts, my words, and my actions? Am I living my dreams? Or am I living someone else's dreams? Am I living life on my definition, how I see? Or am I living someone else's definitions? And how fully am I really expressing who and what I really am? Because the fact of the matter is, regardless of anything else that's happening in the world, we each have a finite amount of time in this lifetime on this planet. Further than that, we each have a finite amount of time each day to allocate our energy. So it's really our choice and it's really our responsibility as to how we spend that time and energy. We can spend it focusing on, oh, well, this is wrong and this is bad and this is going to collapse and this is going to be this and this is going to be that and he said this and he said that and just spend four to five to six hours every day doing that. Or we can take that time, that energy at whatever amount is reasonable for us and think about, well, what do I want to create with my life? What do I want to do? What inspires me? What makes me want to get out of bed in the morning? What fulfills me? What makes me happy? What kind of people do I want to be around? What kind of life do I want to live? And how can I realize and express my dreams? How can I deprogram the BS that people gave to me as a kid so that I can be more of who and what I really am? 
and you know it's easy to talk about oh well, financial situations collapsing and the dollars this and the dollars that and money's this money's that it's really easy to do but it's a little more empowering to say well how abundant am I how abundant do I feel how much abundance do I have in my life no I don't just mean money abundance of love abundance of knowledge and information and wisdom and happiness and fun and joy and so many other ways that which abundance manifests money is just one way so all these things need to be examined and need to be looked at and I think really need to be taken into account rather than investing so much time and energy on someone else's meme, someone else's thought virus, someone else's experience, someone else's theory or perspective or point of view on reality. So hopefully that's been helpful. I realize this isn't the classiest, most professional video I've done because the, I just had to do this in front of my iMac. I couldn't get my camera set up. But uh, hopefully it's been helpful. If you have any questions or comments, post them below and I'll talk to you soon.